Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and there's an old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. And that is exactly what Microsoft is doing with a new version of the Edge browser that's going to be released to all users on Windows 10 at some point this year. And what they have done is thrown out their browser engine and replaced it with the browser engine driving Google Chrome. It's called Chromium, and it's now going to be what Edge is. So you'll still get all of your Microsoft Edge interface things here. You'll have your Microsoft account logged in there, of course, versus the Google one. And of course, you'll have all of the uh, controls be relatively familiar. But the actual rendering of web pages and the execution of JavaScript will be using the open source engine that drives, again, Google Chrome. And I was very eager to try this out because we have seen that Google Chrome on low-end PCs does not play well with YouTube. If you try to watch a 1080p 60 video, you're going to get a lot of drop frames and stuttery playback. Uh, yet, if you were to load up the Edge browser on that same computer, you would have no drop frames at all. So I was curious to see how this new beta of this browser is going to do with that kind of thing, which we're going to explore in this video and look at a few other performance items as well. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the PC we're using in this video came in free of charge from Codlix. However, they are not paying for this review nor reviewing or approving the footage you're about to see before it is uploaded and all of the opinions you're about to see are my own. I wanted to use this computer because this is the same guts that you might find in one of those inexpensive Windows laptops that we get in from time to time. It's got an Intel uh, N4100 processor built in. So let's get going here. We're going to start off with video comparisons and then we'll move over to some other browsing performance measurements. All right, so we're gonna load up the beta version of Edge here and I'm going to go over to YouTube and look for a video that I like to test on a lot of this low-end hardware. And we'll look at this uh, video I shot in Nantucket a little while back. Now this is a 4K 60 frames per second video, uh, but what I'm gonna do is force it to play back at a lower uh, resolution, 1080p, but we're going to have it play at 60 frames per second. So as you can see here, it's set to auto. I'm just going to uh, lock that in at 1080p 60. And now I'm going to pull up the stats for nerds and get an idea as to what our frame drops are. Now you can see we had a bunch of drop frames at the outset. And what I'm finding with this is that as the video is first starting, maybe in the first 30 seconds or so, we get a bunch of drop frames. But once it fills up whatever buffer it needs to fill up, it tends to stabilize here. So you can see we're at about 334 drop frames right now, uh, but it is holding steady and we're not seeing uh, a lot of additional drop frames. There will be a few that happen from here to there, uh, but this scene, as you can see, is pretty fluid, as is this fast motion scene, and we're pretty much holding steady here at 336 drop frames overall. Now take a look at this very same video running at 1080p60 in the Chrome browser on this very same hardware. You can see it's dropping frames all over the place and dropping them constantly. It's never been a good experience, even on some of the Chromebooks we've tested running with low-end Intel hardware, and that's because the Chrome browser doesn't make use of the Intel hardware acceleration for video playback. Uh, now take a look at the original Edge browser. That one's got no drop frames as this video plays back, so it's still the best way to go. And I'm sure you're probably seeing that Stats for Nerds is updating slower on the original version of Edge, but nonetheless, we are not seeing any drop frames as this video plays back. Uh, but it looks like whatever they have cooking here on the beta version will probably work as well as the original. Uh, even with the Chromium engine running all of it. So apparently Microsoft must have some license for hardware decoding that they're paying for, and that looks like it'll continue here with Edge, although at the moment it is starting off a little bit shaky and then kind of levels out. So let's take a look at some basic browser performance, beginning with the amount of memory each browser consumes. So the original version of Edge is running here alongside the Chromium version of Edge in beta, and of course, the latest version of Google Chrome. All of these browsers have the exact same pages loaded. We've got the nasa.gov homepage in one tab and the story from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the other. And you can see that the memory usage is about the same uh, between all of these browsers with this exact same set of pages loaded. 
Uh, this is a vanilla installation of all of the browsers and the operating system. So I don't have any crazy extensions loaded. There's no plugins loaded. All of these browsers are in their default installation state here. I think if you were to add extensions to Chrome or to Edge, you would certainly see greater memory usage. Uh, one thing I noticed a little bit earlier before I hit the record button was that Chrome was doing some kind of crazy download in the background uh, that was consuming a little bit more memory and CPU. Uh, that stopped a few minutes before I started recording and now it's kind of settled down to where it is here. So you can see all three are using again about the same amount of RAM to display the same amount of pages. I did though find that the Chromium version of Edge, even in beta, is performing better than Microsoft's own engine was on their original version of Edge. So check out this head-to-head -head here, going to the nasa.gov homepage. Uh, this is the first time either browser had seen that page, so it had to download everything and then render it. Uh, the computer is connected up via Ethernet in both examples here. And as you can see, the uh, version running with the Chromium engine rendered that page a lot faster. I also loaded up the browserbench.org speedometer test. Uh, that is a test we like to run on all of our mini PCs, and we usually run that test on Google Chrome. Uh, there we got a score of 37.3 running Chrome, and then on the uh, Chromium version of Edge, we got 34.7, so it's definitely within the margin of error uh, of that test. And then we also ran the original version of Edge, and there we got a score of 17.1. So you can see on a synthetic benchmark, it is doing much better uh, with that new engine versus the one Microsoft was running on that browser before. And we also saw some examples of how loading up the NASA page was a little bit quicker on the Chromium version of Edge, even while it's still in beta. Now, like Google Chrome, you can have multiple profiles on your browser running concurrently. Uh, so what I've done here is I've created two different profiles, and if I click on the Cupid heart here, it will pop open a new browser window that is tied to this profile. Now, this profile currently is local only to this machine, uh, but I can have maybe a second set of accounts logged in on this uh, profile versus my other one. I'm sure there are times when maybe you have two Twitter accounts or social media profiles that you want to have up at the same time. Uh, this would let you do that because this user profile gets its own set of cookies versus the uh, main profile that I have logged into my device. You could also sync between devices by signing into a Microsoft account uh, if you want to do that as well. But again, you can just leave these as separate profiles here on the local machine. You can also do incognito browsing. They call it guest browsing here, uh, very similar to what you see on uh, Chrome and Chromium. And if you are looking to download this and play around with it, you can go to MicrosoftEdgeInsider.com. I believe there's going to be versions of this for other platforms. I think there's a Mac version on the way too. Uh, and right now the Windows one is available at the time I'm recording this video. It installs itself separately, so it will not interfere with your existing Edge browser. So you can see here we've got the Edge icon, and then we have the uh, developer version of uh, the new version of Edge, essentially, that can be uh, loaded up at the same time. So there's really not much to lose here by playing around with this. And if you're uh, eager to see what is coming up for Microsoft's native browser, check it out. It's actually much better than I thought it would be, even at this stage, and it's good to see that it appears as though we'll get uh, video hardware decoding running on this browser, and it's already doing better than Google Chrome with a few little hiccups here that I'm seeing as I've been playing around with it, but it looks like it is going to uh, not hinder us at all playing back video on some of these low-end fanless PCs and laptops. So just wanted to check it out. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Maybe we'll do a follow-up if I missed something. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.